Good evening, and welcome to a show with no name. I am DJ Timms, and here is me and Lane in our game from Monday night, some orcs versus the much-feared Votan. I'm going to head it over to Lane, let him explain his army real quick. Hey guys, this is Lane, playing Leagues of Votan. I'm um, just going to go through my list really quickly. We've got two HQs, a call that's upgraded to a high call, a, a broke here Iron Master that's upgraded to the Forge Master, both of those with a Warlord trait. I've got uh, three 10 man squads of Hearthkin Warriors uh, for my, uh, my troops' choices. I've got two uh, five man uh, Berserk squads for my elites. And then I've got two um, Hecaton Land Fortresses. Both of those have different weapons. We'll kind of get to that when we look at the battle report here. And then I've also got two squads of the uh, Pioneers. These are the jet bikes. I've got a three-man and a six-man squad. So going over to the Orcs. It's going to be easier a lot of time for me to tell you as things die because there is a lot. It is a horde of horde army. I have a lot of everything. At one point when I was testing this list, I was running it as a brigade. Uh, three man, two three man bikes, two three man, uh, three three man storm boys, three three man squig hog riders. Wow, say that quick. Three three man squig hog riders. Uh, you got a battle wagon, a bone breaker, some guys inside, three squads of grots for getting the good bits. Uh, my army's being led today by a beast boss. Wanted to try him out a little bit with beast hide mantle and a 5 of feel no pain. Uh, I got some commandos I'll be setting up on the outside to try to get me some early objective plays. Lots of bomb squigs, lots of bodies, lots of orcs. But we'll save you some of the details on that. Hopefully in the future I can get some pictures of the armies to get a little better description. But right now we're just going to kick it right over to the game and go into our deployments. So this is conversion was the mission we did for this. So holding objectives outside of your deployment zone is an additional two points. And it is the table quarters, nine inches out of center. Uh, we in Lane had some pregame moves. I did not. We rolled to go first. Lane went first, got his pregame moves, and kick it over to them for his movement and his turn one. Okay, yeah. So the the jet bikes, the Hernkin Pioneers, they have a 12-inch pregame move. So I took advantage of that, knowing that I was going first. Uh, I moved a squad north up there to uh, the commandos hiding in that building and moved the big six-man squad a little bit closer to the center pregame. Something to note is that the bikes actually have objective security as well. Yeah, they are obsec. They do have the fly keyword so they can fly over things. Real quick, also, you'll notice on the screen there's a couple of little orange objective markers. One of the secondaries that Lane took for this, why don't you explain that real quick? Yeah, one of the, the uh, Votan secondaries is Lay Claim. Basically, I give my opponent three objective markers. They put them on the table more than six inches from a table edge, more than six inches from a deployment zone, and more than nine inches from each other. All, that, all this secondary is is I have to control those at the end of the game. Um, and I get five points for each one I control. So it's really a great objective if I'm planning to kill all my opponent dead. Yeah, and uh, I'm planning on rushing in at them, so there would be a lot of dead orcs, hopefully, in that process. I tried to put the objective markers. I put two to the north. One is underneath the commandos that can't really be seen right now. Other one's kind of in the middle, and then I only put a single one south and in no man's land, kind of trying to separate his forces a little bit, make him have to dedicate in those two separate ways. Not really sure what I was getting into with Votan. Not really sure on how difficult that was going to be, but it sounded good on paper. So back over to Lane. He got the he pregame move. We rolled the dice. Lane got to go first. Progressed out and moving into center. Talk to me a little bit about. So why were you so aggressive with the jet bikes in center? What was your play there? Well, first off, the, the jet bikes are core, and my high call gives one core unit uh, full rerolls to hit. So I, I gave them the full rerolls to hit and moved them up there. I know that you've got a whole bunch of orc units on the board. A lot of them are fast. I know you took behind enemy lines as one of your secondaries. So I just want to start killing things as quickly as possible. Um, and also one of the things that those jet bikes do is there's a, if there's a searchlight on the jet bike, it's an upgrade the bikes can take, then um, after I shoot a unit, I can put a judgment token on it. Um, so that's something I took advantage of uh, and wanted to get you know into place here with this movement. And uh, went north to take care of those commandos just so I can get on another objective and be holding two. 
and clearing orcs he did as you can see like a magic eraser my entire my entire northern flank looking to go after objective marker four was completely eviscerated completely knocked away nothing left commandos gone everything gone so right there first game with votan their fire is real votan moved to center he takes the center takes objective four takes objective two I am commando still holding on objective one, but we're not finished yet because the battle wagon, the bone breaker, the red one that was over to the side that magically disappeared, that got a judgment token on it, did it not? Yeah, that was what I used the, the bikes there for because I couldn't put a token on it with my call because my call puts out that token there in the command phase. And I just couldn't see anything. I wanted to get a token on it because one of my secondaries is killing things that have the judgment tokens. So I used the strategy and my bikes fired a couple stray shots into the battle wagon, not really trying to hurt it, just to score a hit. And after that, I was able to spend one CP and put a judgment token on it. Most of the rest of their fire went to uh, taking out storm boys and bikes. Uh, up north there with those three jet bikes that killed ten uh, commandos, the, the OTAN have a stratagem that allows them to reroll all hits for one unit during the shooting phase. Um, and that can go in anything, any core or even vehicles. Uh, in this case, I wanted to make sure they were able to wipe those uh wipe those commandos out and clear that objective for myself. One of the reasons I like the Bone Breaker and I took the Bone Breaker in this in this list specifically is its transport capacity 12. I like the Battle Wagons 20, I like the capacity 12 on the Bone Breaker because the Bone Breaker allows me to get some of my characters off the board. And here was kind of a unique situation. So one of the plays that I like with the Battle Wagon is Forget the Good Bits, which was a secondary I took and I was prepared to go into the center to get out of the Battle Wagon 3 inches move the six inches, they're my specialist mob that has the odd bits, their objective secured, so they can move in there, take the objective from people, be able to get the good bits on turn one, and keep my points progressing high when a lot of my units are getting scattered. This situation had something really unique in it. Because he blew up that bat the bone breaker, well, my beast boss, who was inside of it, got to disembark and threaten those bikes with a three-inch heroic, if he stayed there. Keyword, if he stayed there. As Lane chose to go the high road and do something that Votan is not exactly there. I mean, they got some close combat, but that's not the bike's job there. Right. I mean, that, that six-man bike squad has a fair number of tra uh, attacks. Um, it's going to have 20 attacks, but there's no AP on it. It's going to be strength four. Really, what I was trying to do here is get away from that uh, that beast boss because knowing he can heroically intervene into me and do some damage there, I charged north there to that last remaining biker just to kind of wipe him off and uh, at least just keep the bikes around for a few minutes more. So that didn't it worked. I mean, one war, one single war bike it wasn't going to live through that. Uh, I mean, uh, it, considering the dice rolls, but we'll, we'll we'll get to those dice rolls later on. My uh, first turn with armor says and shots and everything and uh, in assault was just not there, but it, hang on tight. It came back <laughs> later on in spades. Yeah, DJ's dice in this game definitely had upward uh, momentum. They started off real cold but got warmer throughout the game and had some crazy yeah, rolls later I was on. rolling 2d6. It was either a 1 or a 6. That was it. So we finished out Lane's turn He in a good position. He held center with the bikes. Kind of knowing they were gonna, I was gonna be able to take them out. Didn't want to dedicate too too much into them, but I needed to get center back. So starting into my turn, I moved an entire brick wall, turned my battle wagon sideways to block it, moved all my squig hog boys behind it. Not much to say into this. I didn't call the wah. I had no range to be able to get my army across the field. Couldn't get into his anything of his, and with him having those land fortresses back and able to just pour in fire and just watching a battle wagon get completely evaporated by one of them, I wasn't about to go rushing into him and let him just steamroll my whole army. I knew my battle wagon was done. I knew the second battle wagon was dead. But I was able to get the grots out, get them on the objective, pick up another squad of grots, throw them inside, put the beast snagger boys in there as well. So I got 10 beast snagger and 10 grot in the battle wagon, with all my squig hog riders behind it, pushing around the corner, getting ready to create a new flank, sacrificing the flank over by objective number four. Nothing I really could do over there. 
and just try to kick him out of center. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit before we get into what would be DJ's minimal shooting phase here. He doesn't have a whole lot of shooting in this army, but something that Votan have is a stratagem called reactive reprisal. Uh, it's two CP for the bikes and just one CP for the infantry, but basically, in my opponent's shooting phase, uh, after I've been shot by one of their units, I can spend this uh, CP for this stratagem to shoot them back immediately. So I can return fire on an enemy that has fired upon me. Now this foregoes the next shooting phase for that unit, but if it's a unit like these bikes here, where I know they're going to get wiped by a whole bunch of uh, orc fighting and, and, and crumping, um, I can know, spend that knowing that at least they'll get some value out of it. And like I said, in this case, these bikes had the, the full uh, chapter master rerolls to hit on them, so it's even more efficient. So this kind of limited what DJ could do as far as shooting, because if he shot those bikes or if he shot infantry, he knew that they, was, they might have the, the possibility of shooting back immediately in his turn. Now, mind you, in my list, I'm not have, I don't really have any orc shooting that's going to turn the tables but yeah that was okay i'm not going to throw my pistols i'm not going to throw the extra shots in here let's just get into combat get them in there and get the damage done brought the beast boss my pain boss and my dread into the center to clear those bikes out of there i wanted that objective i wanted them out of the way i did not want those six bikes floating around anymore so i wanted to make sure hit them hit them good and get rid of them and that's what the dread and the beast boss did most, uh, mostly on the Beast Boss. I think he was the one who did the significant amount of damage, and then the Dread finished everything off. I took Biggest and the Bestest, didn't quite get the five models, Did was able to get the center, was able to get uh, three points off of, um, oh, what's that called, uh, get the good bits, and was able to keep a good progression moving into the end of my turn. At least I didn't lose too, too much ground, but... Man, after losing that entire flank in that first turn of shooting, I knew it was, it was going to be rough from there. So we're going to get back over, now moving into turn two. Uh, Lane's going to lead us off. So now your fortress, you got one fortress that you start to bring more into the center. Brent, I, I noticed that the on the left side, that fortress, you originally were pointing it going towards objective marker four, and you turned it back. Uh, is that just because you cleared everything? I mean, were, were at that point, did you feel safe that nothing was going to come up there and be able to take that objective marker four away from the north? Well, I uh, first there were um, five berserks inside that hecaton, and uh, each each hecaton starts with five berserks in it uh, in my list, and so I, uh, I disembarked them and moved them up to take that objective. So both the berserks and the bikes have that objective. So the bikes can shoot some, and obviously the berserks are a very strong um, uh, counter punch or counter charge if anyone tries to get too close to that objective. So I felt like I had uh, pretty secure control of that objective, and wanted to move the hecaton down. Um, to start using its weapons to deal with the the majority of the threat now is kind of in this bottom this uh, southeast corner here um, where we've got a whole bunch of squig hogs um, and multiple characters you've got um, Mazrog on the his great white squig uh -huh. and there's two um, two uh, knobs on smash of squigs and all that stuff does mortals on impact I knew that could be a problem for me because this Votan don't take very well to mortals so I was <laughs> moving most of my firepower to deal with all of that I think I made you a promise uh, that I was going to kill both the the battle wagon and um, all this the uh, the squig hog boys uh, I forgot that there were 20 models inside that battle wagon <laughs> before I started shooting at it so that kind of changed my plans a little bit. We still did a fair amount of damage, uh, both with both the Hecatons and uh, the infantry that were all in range there. Killed, um, killed the battle wagon. There were 10 boys inside uh, that I killed uh, shooting those. Also killed a bunch of grots. There were 10 grots in there. I think four or five of them died on the way out when the battle wagon exploded. But what we had happen here was not exactly what I wanted. Uh, wanted to get a few more of those squid hog riders, but we did a fair amount of damage to those as well. As you can see, uh, he's running out of the models here. There's not as many models as there were to begin with. Um, I was, <laughs> I did get the 10-man the grot squad down to a single grot on that, uh, that southeast corner there. And uh, in the center objective, uh, in the next turn you'll see, on the next couple of slides you'll see we get uh, another grot mob down to a single grot. Um, and... <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, we got I took two. the risk. I took the risk on that guy. I took the risk on him. I took the leadership. Failed the leadership. Went into combat attrition. Going, come on, guys, just give me one. Just give me one. And I got my one. Yeah. I got my one co- guy that stayed there for combat attrition. Spent two CP to keep the grot on the other objective. I'm like, all right, that's it. One grot can get the good bits. He's gonna be carrying a lot, but man. He did it. And that's all it takes. And it's, and it's important to know that one way uh, models can earn judgment tokens in this game is when any time a unit does an action, uh, they get a judgment token placed on them. So over the next I'm couple of turns here, yeah, over the next couple of turns, these single grots will be stacking up judgment tokens. Um, yeah, I don't think I had a, a charge phase here, so this is just the result of the shooting. Yeah, right now, um, just a quick note, uh, the score at that time at the top of two was looking at 17 for me and 14 for Lane. But again, one of the things to remember with the score going throughout this is Lane is waiting on a bulk of his points, or fifteen up to 15 of them, until the end of the game. So I need to make sure that if anything, I'm keeping a huge lead on him to be able to stop that or keep him off those objectives, which... We'll get there shortly. So, like Lane said, peppered the center, peppered the last grots on there, didn't kill him down to the last little guy, was able to keep one alive on each area through morale and CP uh, spending, was able to keep them so I could have a good solid turn of getting the good bits. But, man, my army is kind of not looking too good right now. I mean, I got... The big boys are still alive, which they're about to, they, they can pick up their weight. I mean, like Mazrog and that great white squig, he's so much mortal wound damage when he hits. So much from that squig. So this is where, uh, as the orc player, DJ calls the walk. Yes. Uh, tip, tip, tip my drink, pinky to the sky, call the walk. And it was time to advance and charge and push in there. Mazrog, I had one three-man left of the squigs. A single squig hog rider who was going to be used to try and get some overwatch out, out of him and protect my other guys, which is a big thing. You know, you got one model left in a unit and he's not going to do anything. Well, let him soak up the overwatch because you do not want to be, you don't want to be in a situation where you charge your character with three wounds left into a squad of Votan with a magna rail and then he rolls that one dice and hits a six and ignores your invuln, ignores everything, automatically wounds you because you got a target on there. And oh, your character dies on a Overwatch coming in. <clears throat> Epic foreshadowing. We'll get there. So moving into my turn, we're orcs. Got to push forward. That's about it. Dreadnought's getting ready to try and hit the Vikes, remove them. And I've got this massive horde moving down the bottom. Were you worried at all at this point with how much was still some? Yes, a lot of it's dead. But a lot of those units, you've played orcs, you know how orcs go. There's a lot of attacks, a lot of dice that can come in there. And my bit, two big meanies, the war boss and Mazrog, were still there functioning and ready to roll. Yeah, it definitely killed a lot early on in this game, but it's still, I, I think you'll probably agree, it was still a good game. We were still playing a good game here. Um, and I knew that my my boys, the, the uh, Hearthkin Warriors, the infantry, they have a four-up save, they're T4, and they've got one wound apiece. So they're going to be very susceptible to uh, orc attacks, shredding them. I was less worried about the Hecatons, forgetting about the mortal. I had not remembered the mortal uh, impact damage that the, the smash of squigs did. But um, I had to make a choice when uh, DJ started declaring his charges here. The uh, infantry squad uh, uh, of Hearthkin Warriors at the, the bottom there, at the, the south, um, they had the full chapter master reroll. So if they were gonna overwatch, they would get the, the opportunity to overwatch and reroll all their misses. Uh, however, there was a lone uh, squig hog boy that had a judgment token on him. Instead, I used the different uh, the unit above them to overwatch him and finished him off because one of my secondaries, the ancestors are watching, I get two points in any phase in which I kill something with a judgment token. And by doing that in overwatch, it's just giving me extra points towards that secondary. So uh, choosing to do that and take out that single squig hog rider um, was didn't make an impact in, in what DJ was able to do to me in return, but scored me a couple of points. Um, anyways, and during that phase, 
No, yeah, uh, it definitely definitely helps. We're going to get to the score at the bottom of the phase. I was able to get a, a good lead on him here, but I think this was the one turn where I was able to push and do a lot of the orky things I was trying to get to get these get the points rolling. Um, yeah. Dreadnought made it to the north. He only was able to take one bike. Uh, everything that I was everything towards the south, I was able to remove uh, both of the ten man squads. The one around the Hecaton and the one right in front of the terrain. Mazarag just ate through them. He was able to walk over and tag the Hecaton because uh, now is it all Votan? This is important. All the Hecatons. Anytime you tag that. That thing cannot fall back and shoot, or was it just your liege that could not fall back and shoot? Uh, uh, give me a look. second while you look that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, give quick. me just a uh, second. Yeah, th so that was one of my things. I wanted to turn off the Hecaton and have those, and those both of the Hecatons. Uh, the north, the all the way in the south, a little hard to see, but I was able to tag him with the Squig Hog Rider, my one of my knobs on Smash a Squig. He was able to tag that one down there. The squigs in the middle, they were able to tag it as well. So I got multiple units to be able to... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I didn't get... The squig hog riders were not able to get on because the squig, the knob on smash squig was what finished off your guys protecting the southernmost hecaton. So the squig hog riders were not able to pilot. Only the knob squig, and that actually will matter here in a second. Mm -hmm. Mazrog was able to tag the other one, and that... Did you find anything? Is there a way with Yeah, that? so obviously the Hecatons are vehicles, so they can shoot in combat. There is a stratagem uh, that Votan have, and we have some amazing um, stratagems. But there's one called Well-Ordered Retreat. For one CP, a unit can fall back and shoot, but it's only for core, so the Hecatons are core. So that would be your infantry, uh, your warriors, or the pioneers, the jet buddies. Okay. So we finish out, moving into turn three, bottom of two. After both of our primaries, uh, I was able to get a 12 on primary, which was huge that turn. Get the good bits, five points on that, two for biggest and the bestest, and I was now behind enemy lines for four. I was able to jump this up to a 42 to 26 lead. But again, 15 of Lane's points are waiting until the end of the game. And Votan, Tau, these shooting armies, they don't care. You can wander around and score all your points at the end of the game if the army's not there, and that's what he's looking to try and do. Get me out of the way and go score the points. And as Lane has mentioned a couple of times, the more units that get judgment tokens, the more units he can kill over the course of each phase with the judgment tokens, those are going to score him the points over just completely crushing me in one turn. If anything, that probably lose you points in the long run. All right, so not a whole lot of movement here in my movement phase. I do have uh, on that southern uh, Hecaton, I have five uh, Berserks that were still in there, so they hop on out and, and get ready to start doing some crumping. Um, I move, uh, let's see, yeah, that's really it um, for my movement phase. Yeah, I think phase. that was it. Yeah, you yeah. stayed in combat Everything with was the tied up. Yeah, I forgot to move the, the infantry uh, that were next to the building there, the last 10-man squad I had. Still there. I forgot to move them forward to do much shooting. They still were able to pick up some targets in my shooting phase, though. So, um, an so, entire squad of commandos. Yeah. Uh, so what happened now? Now, there is that lone grot on the uh, center objective. It was up to three uh, judgment tokens on him because he kept doing the action. The bikes were able to take him out pretty easily, and that scored me three points uh, for Ancestors are watching because if there are three Judgment Tokens on the unit that I kill, it scores me three points. So, yeah, three points for uh, popping a lone grot. Felt pretty good about that. Now, in addition to that shooting, the Hecaton that's all the way at the south there, he had a knob on Smash of Squig in uh, engagement range with him, but I didn't want to spend all, all my shooting on that single knob. I wanted to kill those uh, those boys, uh, the boy squad that was a little bit further away as well. So what I did is declare that the magna rail on that hecaton would shoot the knob on smash the squig, and then everything else would go into those boys. Obviously, I can only put the other fire into those boys if I kill uh, the knob with a single shot. So Votan have this nice little stratagem called Hunter's Mark for one CP. I just pick one weapon and one shot with it, and it just automatically hits. So even though it would be a heavy weapon, I would normally be hitting on fours in close combat and engagement range like that. I just pick the uh, the Magna Rail, 
and it automatically hits. Then, you know, DJ, all I have to do is roll a two to wound your uh, your knob because uh, you're not going to get any kind of invuln save. And the what mega happens rail. every time you only need to roll a two in a clutch scenario. So, yes, I rolled a, managed to roll a one on my wound, but I really wanted to get this efficiency off, so I did spend a CP to re-roll that into a better number than one and finished off the uh, the knob on Smash Quig with a single shot and shredded the rest of that squad of boys with all the other fire coming from the Hecaton. It's really rare that that actually I see that come into play. I think maybe it's because a lot of vehicles do not have the weapons systems that the Hecaton has, where it has that much value to be able to want to shoot at a separate target that you're not in combat with. It's like, I don't know, it just maybe there's maybe I'm missing it, maybe there's other vehicles as well, but it seems like the Hecaton in its own right, that land fortress is in its own realm of a vehicle that we'll probably see a lot more of that. Probably see a lot more of it trying to shoot itself out of combat where it's able to target, kill what it's in combat with it, and then continue on to everything else. Yeah, that Hecaton, the way I have it equipped is the Magna Rail on top, which is one shot. But this is the south one, right? Yeah, the southern one here. Um, yeah, this is one shot, but it's strength 14, AP 4, ignores invulns, and it's 6 plus 2d3 damage. One really strong shot. The, uh, all the Hecatons are equipped with a, a Matter Auto Cannon. It's 6 draw shots, strength 7, AP uh, 2, to flat 2 damage. And this one has four bolt cannons. So that's going to be a total of 12 shots at strength 6, AB2, 2 damage. So it puts out a lot of shots. Um, but you see there's a variety of profiles there. There's that Magna Rail, which can really just shred anything with 8, 10, 12 wounds on it. Because it could do 12 wounds in a single shot. Um, and, so, and with ignoring invulns, I knew that I'd be able to pick up that character. I just had to get that shot through. Oh, and, yeah. and again, with DJ's, the way he built his list, there were just a ton of units. I knew I needed to be as efficient as possible just getting rid of all of them so I could control the board. Yeah, every turn that I have a single unit, that's another possibility for uh, behind enemy lines. Also note that my Dreadnought, you know, two, there was three bikes there, Dreadnought charges and two get away. Bad, bad roll. Dreadnought just... Did, the Def Dread just did not want to make it happen, and uh, you know he he made some new friends up there, didn't he? Yeah, it turns out the Berserks are really good. Uh, the way I have all my Berserks equipped uh, in this list is uh, they have the Plasma Axe, and the Plasma Axe has two profiles: either Strength Six, uh, AP Three Two Damage, or Strength Five, AP Three One Damage with a Sweep. The sweep just gives them twice as many attacks, but each one gets three attacks. So five berserks with that sweep profile are swinging uh, 30 times. And guess what? Uh, there's a stratagem. For one CP, berserks just get to reroll all their hits. So uh, even in this case where I don't think I had any judgment tokens on that dread, so I wasn't getting any auto wounds, still with the volume of, of attacks that were landing, I still needed fives to wound because it was only strength six, but it was enough to get through. I didn't go with the strikes the harder hits with the two damage because with Ramshackle on the Dread, they would have been reduced to one anyways. Right. That was, uh, Dread I think had some damage on him already. Not very much, but a little bit. So they were able to take quick over him. And then the Berserks in the south were able to take out a knob. That knob did have judgment tokens on it. It was worth the points. It was a solo charge. And the Hecaton ended up in combat with the Smash Squig with the Squigs afterwards. I believe you charged my Squig Hog Riders with the Hecaton. Listen, the Hecaton can do whatever it wants to. Apparently, um, in this case, I just didn't want those Squig Hogs to get into my. I didn't want them to charge my uh, Berserks that were there, right. um, because I knew that would if, if you had the first attack, you would kill like, at least a, a couple of them. Yeah, uh, I am. Uh, I'm playing the the League Ymir. Which means everything has at least a five up invuln, which is one of the ways that you know those those dreadnoughts, uh, your drift dread hitting the bikes didn't do as well. If I pass a couple five up invulns, um, <clears throat> so they have some defense, uh, but I really don't want them to get shredded by those squig hogs. I knew that the, the regular squig hog boys didn't wouldn't do too much damage to the hecaton. I mean, they would have traded with me because they fight on death for free, but that's yeah. also the. But then again, like you said, now you, you don't want them. That was not how you wanted. That's value. That's not trading. You didn't want to trade them. It's not that. That's not this situation. You wanted the squig hogs done, and it worked. It honestly worked because yeah. the squig hogs ended up staying on you. I didn't really want the hecaton to get to be able to shoot at whatever it wanted, even though there wasn't very much left. Some of those little one piece models and stuff like that I needed to survive, especially my beast boss at center, 
who there's no way he could survive the firepower of the Hecaton. He was done. Even with, his, with the, full, the invuln, the feel no pain, it wasn't going to happen. Impossible. Now, but now there is one thing that was very adorable I'm very happy about. The Mazrog. Mazrog in the middle. Mazrog on his great white squig. He starts a munching on that Hecaton. Starts a munching. Because we're going to get there soon where he's going to After, continue. To remind me what Mazrog's damage is. He does his, his, the great white squigasaur does mortals. Right? Yes. Yeah, so the, yeah. Because that was, that was definitely doing work into my Hecaton. Because the Hecaton's got the, the Forge Master a couple inches away from him. So once per turn, I can zero out a failed armor save. And I, uh, so that's keeping, uh, you know, helping to keep the Hecaton alive. But it doesn't affect mortals. I can't stop mortals. So I think it was doing significant mortal damage every combat phase to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, incidentally, my shooting phase into Mazrug uh, was a total failure. I think I managed to do two damage with all the shooting. Um, it just didn't, didn't work out. This was also a time where my dice went hot because then I failed to failed some saves, took some wounds, and rolled sixes for feel no pain. It was like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to take two wounds at the end of all this. But yeah, the uh, Great White Squig, uh, sixes to wound, inflict four mortal wounds instead of the damage. Mm -hmm. So that was, I think I got two of them on there. I think that was eight, and then you s failed to save and then used the ability to stop that. But I think that was the the beginnings of the blood in the water for that Hecaton was mm -hmm. hitting it with those two sixes off the Great White Squig. It was like, uh, here we go, trouble's about to start. And then moving over into my turn, well, now it's kind of getting one-dimensional. Beast Boss in the center. He's got to clear them out. He's got to take that for biggest and the bestest. So at least have the two points. I'm not going to get... They're not vehicles. I'm not killing five models. So best I'm getting out of there is two points. I got one Grot that's hiding in a building on objective marker one who could still get me the three points for get the good bits. Mazrog is going to continue chewing on that. I'm second guessing myself still here with this. My Pain Boss decided he was going to go over and help out the beast boss to try to heal them, try to keep him alive, and also try to play a little bit of a block later into it to move in front to try to keep the berserkers from being able to charge center against the beast boss so I didn't lose him. Uh, the end of this turn is when Mazrog actually was able to finish devouring the Hecaton and pile in and get ready to start moving through his last squad of infantry. Uh, other than it that, was Hecaton. gone. Yeah. Boo. Boo. I like it though. I like it. I like it. Well, they don't die that often, <laughs> so I don't get to say it that often. End of turn, we were looking. End of turn uh, three, we were looking at. Yeah, getting in. This is just turn three. We're looking at 61 for the orcs, 47 for the Votan. And uh, yeah, that's that's about. I got one one more turn that I'll be staying up there. The that's Storm Boys got in here. Um, I think we forgot oh, to mention yeah, yeah, the Storm Boys came stores. in in your movement phase there. Yeah, they were able to get the charge in on his northern unit. I mean, here we go in a nine-inch charge and MSU builds with five-man units. It can be nice. You can tag a couple units. I was able to get in there, just tag the one guy. I didn't bring everybody in. I didn't want to bring everyone in there and let him be able to pull that character from the front back uh, and start pummeling the Storm Boys, but I still wanted to start chewing at that squad and at least be in combat with them. So yeah. wasn't a lot of damage off the Storm Boys. Nothing to write home about, but they were there for behind enemy lines. And it's kind of hilarious that there is this unit, this uh, five-man uh, Forge Master unit. It's basically a, a dwarf tech marine, but he's got four little robot buddies there. So it's a five-man unit that can spread out. I was trying to do some, block some deep strike here with him, and when uh, DJ charged him, he was able to kill a few of the, the robot buddies, but not actually get to the Forge Master. Uh, it, it's a it's a unique unit uh, in that it's this character that's character pre protected, but also uh, this unit that if you want to kill it, you actually have to shred through all these little little bits and bobs. All right, so moving uh, on as we get deep, we're going to about get oh what uh, we're going to be getting deeper into some of these turns real quick. Uh, yeah. A lot more is going to be dying real fast. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have much of a move phase on my next turn. Um, really wasn't a lot. I, I think it was going to set up the um, <clears throat> uh, the berserks uh, in the northwest corner there. We're going to make a run for uh, the beast boss. 
and uh, everything else was mostly locked in combat. I had uh, I got the berserks uh, in the south there a little closer to Mazra because we we're going to have to put some work into him. The infantry squad wasn't going to be able to do it by themselves. Uh, when it came to shooting phase, uh, more shenanigans with that southern hecaton. I had two uh, uh, squig hog boys in base contact with me. But there was that uh, beast boss on the center objective that I thought the magna rail might do some work into. So I flipped it this time. Uh, I put all the small shots into the, the squig hog boys. Um, so that would be about 18 shots from two damaged weapons going into them. And then the, called the magna rail on the beast boss. Didn't make boss. a single save on any one of those guys. I think you killed me on the wound with the number of damage. And it was like, oh, make one save. Nope. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, they're all AP2 or AP3 at this range if you have a, uh, a judgment token on you. So uh, I didn't get much of a save on those and all two damage apiece. But uh, yeah, so they shredded. So the, the small arms fire took care of the squig hogs. The magna rail uh, fired into the beast boss in the center, uh, hits them, wounds them. No way he could survive uh, because I rolled uh, nine damage. Six, again, flat six plus 2d3, nine damage. Impossible for him to survive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was on who was that you were talking about? Uh, that's your Beast Boss. Oh, no. Uh, beast Boss made it through. The, I thought your Berserker. No, your Berserker's finished it. No, the Beast Boss survived. Remember, he. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. He made yeah, yeah, five yeah, yeah. feel yeah, no yeah, pains yeah. off of nine damage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot. He, about that. he survived Thank enough you. with the two wounds on him, I believe, <laughs> through the end of this turn. So. Took a magnet rail with the face and was uh, laughed it off. And, you don't get an involm. I get feel no pain. Right. Here's where it stops. <laughs> So yeah, he was able to make it through, but then Lane's Berserks decided that they were going to do. I think that was a. I think that was a box card charge on that. They did get to reroll for free. Uh, Berserks get a free reroll on the charge, so that that can be helpful. I don't remember whether I made it on the first I or second. I know that here, you had a box car over this game, and I think that was one of them, yeah. and it pushed you through because I tried to block you with the pain boss, so that yeah. you had to go at him. And if you tried to go with the long charge and failed then you wouldn't get the pain boss or the beast boss. Instead, you did get both and yeah. ate them both quickly. The berserks did work here. Both the, the northern unit took the beast boss in the center there, and in the south uh, west corner, the uh, berserks shredded uh, Mazrog. However, um, being that DJ is a, a faithful Necron player, he decided to use reanimation protocols on Mazrog, and what was it? On a four up, he, he got back up and he yeah. rolled that die. He rolled Maserog, that took his, Maserog took his own warlord trait, which is on a four up, he stands back up with D3 wounds remaining. And I smiled and said, Here we go. You know, I wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be me without having something that can stand back up. So after Maserog died to the, be, to the beast boss, after the, be, or beast boss, I, beast Berserks. boss, Berserks, after the beast boss is dead, pain boss is dead. Grots are dead. Squig Hog Rider's dead. All I got left is some Storm Boys and Mazrog. Mazrog said he's coming. I'm sorry, back. there's one Grot on Objective 1. A and single Grot in that building. And he, 10 on the uh, the uh, the north uh, northeast objective there. Yeah, they were just holding that. Yeah, that's where they stayed the whole game. 40 points to hold that. So that was, that was bloody. It was looking like this is probably where you can look at it and say, okay, I think we can see where this is going. Because, again, remember that 15 points that Lane's got looming that he just needs to take a walk backwards. And he also had a nice little trick in his pocket we'll get to in a second to help him finish that off. But going into my turn, there was Mazrog on his feet, and there was only one thing to do charge directly into the what are they what is what's the unit called technically what are those they are hearthkin warriors charge directly face first into the hearthkin warriors because i'm toughness seven i got a four up in bone i reduced damage by one and i came back with three wounds he's not going to kill me in the overwatch remember how i said earlier talking about that back in the rail go on well, uh, this nice, is your moment. The Take nice it. thing about uh, th this unit, first of all, had been given the, the chapter master rerolls uh, from the high call, so they'd be rerolling all hits in Overwatch. Uh, thing to keep in mind with Votan is with Overwatch, if you've got a judgment token on you, that means a six to hit automatically wounds. So if someone rolls a six to hit you in Overwatch, they don't even have to roll 
the, the wound roll. Uh, this can make Overwatch surprisingly efficient. Uh, in this case, uh, the 10 man, a bunch of bolter shots. He's only got a couple wounds left on him. Uh, but I rolled the Magna Rail first, rolled the six, and deleted uh, Mazrog before he could get in and chomp on my, my juicy little boys. So poor, poor Mazrog. I mean, this really awesome guy, friend, family, hero of the ages, was laid waste on his great white squig. Storm Boys left in the corner at the end of my turn. And this, mind you, this is the end of my turn. So we're looking at finishing out the turn. Orcs are still in the lead, 76 to 72. And that's about where we're going to get to the wrap-up because now there's not much left to go on. Now we're in the cleanup steps. Lane, go on. Well, I moved my Hecaton over there to take, uh, and I, I advanced it uh, so that I could take uh, that bottom objective, but also the, the, you see, my secondary objective there as well. And I wanted to block that out so that Croc couldn't get around uh, my Hecaton and try and either... Uh, Contest that objective with me. He I didn't about charging. Yeah, I didn't really need the the primary. I needed that uh, secondary objective, the little orange one. Now, uh, a lot of people talk about how, uh, but it also prevented me from getting a get the good bits late in yeah, the game. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people talk about how um, leagues of Votan are slow. There are a lot of things in this army that are very fast. The vehicles auto advance six. The bikes auto advance six. The bikes move twelve. Pre-game move twelve. And some of the units, uh, some of the characters and the terminators can have uh, a the option of, of, of teleporting. So I was able to teleport my call, uh, jumping from the building uh, in the southwest to the building in the northwest, taking both the objective four and the uh, the secondary objective, the, the lay claim objective that's on that building as well. Um, and that, that teleport is just to pick up and drop down anywhere outside of nine inches of any opponents or any enemy models. Same turn. It's not going into reserves. It's pick up, drop down immediately. So be aware of that when you're looking at Votan, that they may be able to jump around a little bit on you. Yep, so that allowed him to get the one, the one marker in the building. It also allowed him to stretch out his uh, berserkers to tag the center and grab the one in the on the side. Uh, I mean, in this situation, wasn't wasn't super necessary, but it's good and best practice because I didn't have the units to be able to score at the end of the game. I didn't have the units to be able to get any little extra point points on him, but he was in a good solid position. You can see he's controlling objective markers four, two, and one. He's got a nice little it basically cut the battlefield a little right down the middle. I mean, yeah, you got some berserkers dangling off to the side, but for the most part of it, it's this is cut right down the middle, and I'm not, it's do not pass go. You are not getting any further than this. The Over in his home objective, he was able to shoot down and take out the last of my storm boys. My grot was not able to get the good bits, nor take objective one, because they're not objective secured. Only my one squad was, and so we contested that objective, only objective marker I held was in the top corner to get me four more points to break 80. But all in all, now with all the kill points, the primaries, and that last 15 pushes Votan over at a 97, putting the score at 80 to 97 as the final. With, you know, it's really nice to see that some of these shooting armies do can be slow. Some of these armies can be slow and still be able to win the game. It doesn't have to be all these super fast cram things down your throat, you know, like we see with Necrons and Sisters of Battle that have a lot... I mean, they're, they're defensive as well, too, in kind of a different way, where they're still kind of scoring points over the course of the whole game, where we're able to see armies like Botan that can... Your one secondary does score over the points points over the course of the game, but you have this end game secondary that allows you to, in no man's land, allows you to not be as aggressive early and play into that late. And I like to see that from some of these armies. So I think that's, I think that helps give more of an identity to some of these armies that don't, that ne don't necessarily get, oh, don't. If they get pumped up too much, we have overpowered, broken armies that constantly your units have to be nerfed and you don't know what you're playing. Where now we have secondaries, it's more about the missions and how these armies can play the missions, maybe some terrain setup. 
I do like seeing that with Botan. I do like seeing how they do that stuff. I don't like seeing the Hecaton just completely obliterate me. I definitely don't like seeing Mazrog die to a six on an Overwatch <laughs> that obliterates him. But it is... It wasn't... I don't... I'm not calling that the sky is falling. I'm not saying that the sky is falling with Botan. They're good. They're strong. Be careful. But I don't see the sky is falling. Yeah. Um, so I just want to go over... To touch on that a little bit. Um, there are definitely weaknesses. Uh, weaknesses are mortal wounds. Other than the Berserks, there's no five up... There's no feel no pains in uh, the army, really. If somebody has a Psyker, they can put a six up feel no pain on a unit. But... That's not a very strong defense to significant mortal wound output. There are some issues with the range of the guns. The Magna Rail is obviously very strong, but the ones being carried by the troops are 24-inch range. The Heavy Magna Rail on the Hecaton is still only a 36-inch range. Um, so it's not that far. I mean, if you look at the range of a lot of weapons that the Tau have, it's much further. Especially yeah. with a lot of the terrain we see nowadays, you're not looking at, I mean, you are you don't need a 120-inch range, mm -hmm. you know, to shoot across the table and hit something. It's, you know, I mean, 48 is, I mean, in most scenarios, probably quite enough, but I, I don't, I think that sometimes that range is kind of, you know, as long as you're at 18, that puts you at a good position to be able to shoot something down and not get charged, not over-dedicate into it where you're going to get charged. We're 12-inch range. If you shoot something down, there's probably something else nearby that could charge you in those assault-based matchups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's definitely um, the infantry, the Hearthkin Warriors, their armor save is a four-up. The bikes, the pioneers, um, their armor save is a four-up. So mass fire definitely works into them. Some things to keep in mind when you're playing against Votan, like I said, check with your opponent, see if they have anything that can teleport, because uh, that's very powerful, especially in the late game. Uh, there are a lot of upgrades that the Votan can take on both the infantry and the bikes that allow them to ignore light cover, ignore dense cover, that sort of thing. But when those units start getting whittled down, they're going to lose the models that carry those upgrades. So just check in with your opponent when you're playing against them and see what's left. If you've got three Hearthkin Warriors left, ask them, do you still have the upgrade that lets you ignore cover? They may have pulled that model, so be aware of that. Um... But yeah, again, Mortal Wounds, Mass Fire, those are the things that are going to do it. Um, they, they definitely make an impact on me when I'm playing. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, all in all, it was a great game. It was a great learning experience. Uh, typically, when I like to play against armies, I like to play a defensive way to learn how to do that. But, you know, orcs, orcs don't really play that defensive way into it. Um, I still, it wasn't that bad. I was able, the damage I was able to do was still very solid damage. A lot of his units that ended up scoring points, I was able to get my hands on them at some point. But sometimes, you know, that's just dice, baby. And yeah, I don't think it was outstanding playing on my part either. The, the Votan are very strong. I would have liked to have another turn before my Hecatons were engaged in, in combat so they could choose uh, their targets a little bit better. I would have liked to have one less turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the one Hecaton that died to Mazra, he had beam weapons, and he never really got the opportunity to use those, uh, especially with how many units he had on the table. I, I could have lined up a, a solid shot that hit um, three or four units at once and did a whole lot of damage across the army, and that never happened. So... Um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, final score on the secondaries, uh, ancestors are watching. Um, if my opponent has any units left on the table at the end that have uh, judgment tokens, they actually lose points on that score. I still managed 15 because I scored 17 or 18 uh, on that, but be aware of that. If you've got a, a weak little unit that's got a judgment token on it, if you hide it, that takes away from your uh, Votan opponent's uh, ancestors are watching right, score. That, right. Yeah, and like uh, just hitting the final score real quick, I was able to, uh, biggest and the best, I was only able to get six points off of, and that was mostly off of center. Get the good bits, 14. It's a very good, reliable one. Behind enemy lines, I, was only, I got stopped at a 10, and Lane went 15, 15, 15. The only points I was able to stop him on was on the primaries, where he scored a 42 versus my 40. Uh, and all in all, it was a good game. Uh, that's it for me. You got any last comments lane no it's a lot of fun there's definitely some crazy dice in the game and it's a lot of fun interactions all right 
Well, this is my first battle report. I listen, look forward to hearing from some responses, some stuff we can add in there, and let me know, and uh, we'll get back to a new game to you guys soon. Thank you.